So welcome back to E375. Uh, this lecture is going to kick off our transition from the topic of, of data wrangling and data visualization to diving into the idea of data analysis. Before we dive into statistical methods and how they actually work and how we use them, I want to start by laying a foundation for data analysis that is based not just on summary statistics, such as the means and variances we saw a few lectures ago, but one that is firmly rooted in probability theory and the idea of using probability to connect data to models, uh, whether that's simple statistical models, such as fitting means or fitting straight lines like in regression, uh, to more complex models such as mechanistic models. They're all fundamentally uh, connected through this idea of probability. That's, you know, a colleague here at BU once said that probability is the new calculus, and I think that really reflects uh, a lot about how we are thinking about probability and how ubiquitous it is uh, across disciplines these days. Uh, and, and the analogy to calculus being that uh, across many of the natural and, and even social sciences, calculus at one point was kind of the lingua franca across the sciences. It would allow you know, me to you know, attend a lecture on environmental economics or hydrology or you know, earth physics and you know, be able to follow what's going on because there was this common use of, of calculus underlying a lot of the theory and models in a lot of different fields. Uh, and these days, with uh, the increase in the use of data and data collection and uh, bigger data, you know, we now are, I think, seeing an era where it's this idea of using data and models together and, and using probabilities to glue has made probability equally ubiquitous across many disciplines. Uh, so some of the key concepts I want to cover in this series of videos, uh, first, uh, what is a random variable? What is a probability distribution? Uh, common probability distributions and their representation in R. And then the idea of a likelihood. Uh, these concepts are going to let, are setting us up for some important uh, questions that we want to be able to use uh, uh, models and data together to answer, such as uh, how consistent is this observed data with a particular hypothesis? How confident we are, are we in our predictions? Uh, what is the probability of different outcomes occurring? Uh, how do we account for uncertainty, chance, and variability when making predictions? And then how do we estimate parameters in the models that we're using uh, to do this? Uh, so to be able to do this, I'm going to start by uh, start with a few definitions. And the first is uh, just the idea of a random variable. Uh, and that's a really uh, you know, this simple definition, but a really, I guess, important one because it's different from how we think about variables uh, in other contexts. So, you know, we talked about at the beginning of the semester how, you know, in you know algebra we think of variables as a thing we're trying to solve for. Uh, in in computer science, we think of them as you know where we're storing things in the computer's memory. Um, and but you know when we think about it in that kind of algebraic sense, which is the way most of us uh, you know, we're taught math, you know, a, a variable would solve for a thing. Or, you know, if it solved for two things, there was, you know, one of them was the right answer. And we just didn't know, like, if it was, you know, is, is the square root of you know, five, you know, coming from, you know, a, you know, a plus or a minus root on some quadratic equation or something like that. Um, but you know, we we kind of viewed this as a that this solving process is fundamentally deterministic. Uh, by contrast, with a random variable, it's a variable that can take on uh, more than one values, uh, in which the values are determined by probabilities. It doesn't have a single fixed value. It you know it kind of has a chance of being at different values uh, simultaneously. Um, so a, a simple example of that uh, would be a simple thing like a coin flip. And so, you know, if we flip a coin once, it has two possible outcomes, either heads or tails. And there's, you know, one way it could come up heads and, and one way it could come up tails. Uh, if we flip two coins, 
Uh, there's three possible outcomes, no heads, one heads, or two heads. And there's you know one way it can come up no heads, one way it could come up uh, both heads, and two different ways that it could come up heads or tails, either first heads, then tails, or first tails, then heads. And you could follow that pattern up to you know, three coin flips. You know, there's one way to get z zero, one way to get three, but there's three different ways to get one head, uh, three different ways to get two heads, so on to four flips, five flips, whatever, and this generalizes to uh, any number of flips. Uh, and this, this coin flipping process is often you know, represented by a, a distribution that many of you may have seen in earlier classes, the binomial distribution, uh, which says that for some n number of coin flips uh, with some probability p, how many do we expect to come up heads or tails? Uh, and it should be noted this idea of a binomial distribution is not limited just to um, things that occur with a 50-50 chance. You, you can have this binomial distribution with any value of probability. So if, if something is 90% chance of occurring, 10% chance of not occurring, uh, and it, it, you know, but we have this event occurring twice, we can write down that there's, you know, only one way that it could not have occurred, uh, a 10% chance for the first time, a 10% chance the second time, giving us a 1% chance of not occurring. There's one way that it could have occurred twice, 90% chance, 90% chance, giving us an overall 81% chance. And then there's two ways that it could have occurred uh, once, but not the other time. So 90% chance times 10% chance, giving a 0.9% chance. Two ways, 18% uh, chance, and all those, those probabilities add up to one. 